Hello everybody, and welcome to Space and Planet. Please subscribe now for the latest Earth and space science news. On Thursday, September the 1st, 1859, Richard Carrington projected an image of the Sun's disk through his telescope onto a plate of glass with distemper of a pale straw colour. He recorded his observations, drawing diagrams of all the sunspots, whether grouped or detached, when all of a sudden in an area which he called the Great North Group, two patches of intensely bright and white light broke out, shown on his diagram as A and B. He adjusted his telescope to increase the clarity of his projected solar image and noticed the solar outburst was quickly intensifying. He ran to call someone so they could witness the event with him. But when he returned 60 seconds later, the region of the sun in question had already changed so much. Very shortly afterwards, the last trace was gone. And although he continued to watch for an hour, it never came back. In his own words, he was mortified. The solar event was witnessed at 11.18am UK time and, five minutes later at 11.23, the sunspots had all but disappeared. Carrington did draw this diagram of the sunspot cluster, which was published in the monthly notices of the Royal Astronomical Society, and here it is to scale on the sun next to sunspot AA3354 which we've seen this week. The Carrington event is the subject of a fantastic short article by Dr. Tony Phillips this week. Link below in the description. As he says, in mid-19th century England, Carrington was well known for his observations on the sun, spending every cloudless day in London, which can't be a lot, projecting images of the sun. But little did he know how important and historic his observation would be on September the 1st. It was actually the first time a solar flare had been witnessed, and two days later an enormous coronal mass ejection would strike the Earth, in what was Solar Cycle 10. For reference, we're now on Solar Cycle 25. It only took 17.6 hours for the coronal mass ejection to reach us, compared to the several days of a typical CME. The geomagnetic storm was intense. Auroras could be seen as south as the Caribbean. They were also seen in Mexico, Colombia, Japan, Hawaii, China and Australia. The glow was so bright that it woke gold miners in the Rocky Mountains who thought it was the morning. Telegraph stations broke down all over Europe and North America, many of them catching fire and giving electric shocks to operators. As recorded by two telegraph operators, one in Portland and one in Boston, USA, they had a conversation for around two hours using no battery power, their conversation working solely with the current induced by the Aurora. Elias Loomis wrote a number of articles in the American Journal of Science recording all the effects of the storm that were noted around the world. Although it's often quoted as some freak event of history, the truth is that such solar storms do occur every 40 to 60 years on average. There was another severe solar storm in 1921, a large event in 1989, and a Carrington-class superstorm was recorded on July 23rd, 2012. But luckily, it narrowly missed the Earth. Yes, the Carrington event is rare, but it's not unique. And for all we know, there could have been much larger storms in history. For example, red auroras were seen in Japan and China in September 1770, and the event was witnessed firsthand by Captain Cook viewing from Timor Island south of Indonesia. Historic drawings of the sunspot responsible have been discovered and it was twice the size of Carrington's. The resulting storm is thought to be of a similar size, but it did last several days longer. A number of astronomers saw Carrington's sunspot, including Father Angelo Secchi in Italy and Heinrich Schwab in Germany and the solar flare was also witnessed by amateur astronomer Richard Hodgson. Historic observations are shown in this fantastic 2019 paper, and I've linked it below in the description. 
As noted by Dr. Phillips, Carrington's sunspot was approximately 9% as wide as the solar disk, and its surface area was 2,300 millionths of the solar disk. Yes, it's big, but since then we have witnessed comparable sunspots, and as recently as June the 6th, 2023, one was nearly as wide as Carrington's, although the surface area was smaller. Carrington's was certainly huge, and the last time we saw one that big was November 2003, when sunspot AR486 was observed. This released the strongest solar flare in the modern era, known as X28. The size of a sunspot can give us an indication of how big the activity will be, but with regards to how and if it will affect the Earth, there are many factors to consider. Carrington witnessed a huge solar storm as it happened, and so, as a result, his name lives on. When the next Carrington class event will happen, of course we don't know, but astronomers around the world continue to do exactly what Carrington did in 1859, observing the Sun and recording its ever-changing nature. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Space and Planet. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.